and welcome to a brand new episode of Instacar HK. Today, we're reviewing this 1973 BMW 3.0 CSI. Known internally as the E9 model, BMW produced them between 1968 to 1975. They began with the 2800 CS model before introducing the 3.0 CS and the 3.0 CSI models in 1971. Now, both the 3.0 models had a 3-liter inline-six single overhead cam engine. The difference being that the CS model had carburetors and had 180 horsepower, whereas this CSI model was fuel-injected and had 200 horsepower. Now, most, if not all of you, will have heard of the CSL model, which was the limited and lightweight homologation model released by BMW for them to join the Group 2 European Touring Car Championship. Now, the CSL was actually based on the CSI model, except it shed off 210 kg by having thinner body panels and using aluminium for parts such as the engine bonnet. However, the engine is actually largely similar to the one in the CSI model, where BMW only makes minor tweaks, including a very slight increase of engine capacity from this car's 2,986cc to the CSL's 3,150cc. This shows the racing pedigree that the CSI model has, as it was really the beginning of the CSL's racing success history, and successful it was, where the CSL won multiple titles throughout the 70s in the European Touring Car Championship. Now, the E9 was always recognized to be one of the most beautiful BMW models ever made. It was put together by coach builder Carmen, and you can see why. Just by looking at the general body shape, it's long, low and smooth, very sleek design, and some of the features on it you'll never see again today, including these super thin A and C pillars and the non-existent B pillar, making it a very clean and smart look consistent with the car's overall body shape. Now, personally, my personal favorite are the door handles, where they're incorporated into the body line of the car, again, consistent with the seamless design of the overall shape of the car. Now, we all know the E9 looks beautiful. Now it's time to find out whether it drives as beautifully as well. The moment you sit in here, it's it's a big GT car, so it's very spacious. As always with this Eurus car, visibility is great, you know, due to the thin A pillars. It's the interior is largely original. These very 70s fabric seats, the wood has some patina on it. The carpet was um, newly installed in, in red back when the owner restored it, which goes very nicely with the exterior blue color. The first thing I notice is it, the seating position is very comfortable. Usually with these older European cars, you, know, you find you know, either you're too low or, or the, the steering wheel is too far away, you know, things like that. But this, I feel you know, right at home immediately. So without further ado, let's start the car. It's a in fuel injected car, so there's no need for the usual um, carburetor ritual to go through. So let's start. Starts immediately. Now this is uh, inline six injected, but it actually sounds quite good. It sounds quite muscular. You can hear. Right. So it is made to be, you know, a reasonably lu luxurious car. So you have things such as the, um, the electric windows. There we go. Um, so let's go. It's a four-speed manual gearbox. Transmission is quite tight, quite precise. You don't have to guess around which gear you're going in. Now the throttle is actually quite hard and sticky. And you really have to step down to get the power going. But the 
car sounds good. Good thing about these older cars is even when it's fuel injected, it sounds very potent and nice. The car revs very freely. It doesn't feel very torquey. It's a car that you need to rev it a bit. It's not a V8 or torquey V8. So it, it does rev and, and you do have to give it a bit of rev for the car to maneuver. I mean, it's not a light car. So, but you know, once you get the momentum going, it's very good and smooth. Being a four speed though, the gears are very long. Um, in these sort of mountain roads, you really only need second and third gear. Even a third gear is it's not, you know, you're not always in third gear. But the moment you hit a bit of traffic, you're immediately down to second gear. So that's, you know, the characteristic of being a four-speed car. Steering is very good, very precise and accurate. Brakes are good. It looks big on the outside, but at the end of the day, it's a 70s car. So the size is generally smaller than the cars today. So I'm very comfortable in this narrow your know, Sheko road, it's just fine. You can position the car very nicely the way you want it. We've got some clear roads ahead. Try out some cornering. You feel the weight of the car, but Fortunately, the brakes do help it. And once again, the gears are precise so you can properly get into gear before placing yourself for the corner. It's a car you can really put around corners, you know, you know, for classic car standards without being too concerned or worried, you know. Inspires enough confidence. Overall, I'm quite impressed with this car. I mean, it feels very solid, you know, despite being a 1973 car, and it's it's great fun around these corners. So the ownership story of this car is a bit of a love at first sight. The owner was in Singapore and back in the 90s and was waiting in the traffic lights when this beautiful shaped car passed by, which turns out to be the BMW E9. Since then, the owner couldn't forget about it and in 2011, he was finally able to find a 3.0 CSI in the UK and he bought it immediately and put it through a two-year restoration before shipping it back to Hong Kong in 2014. Now the car is largely original with uh, matching numbers but some of the details such as the color and the wheels and the carpets are, are to the owner's own taste so it's not original. So this blue color for example is a color that the owner picked and it's not, but it's not original. So BMW E9s are notorious for their rust problem. No one can talk about the E9s without talking about rust. Legend has it that uh, the coach builder Carmen put it together with the rust on since day one. Now that's a joke obviously, but mainly like a lot of cars in this era, they have very bad rust protection. This car was uh, fully restored, so you can't really see any rust around, but generally you see in E9s you'll rust around the bonnet area, around the nose area, on the floors, but the worst part would be the front fender. As you can see, this is a one-piece fender, it's not separate like conventional cars. And rust normally starts uh, from the inside, where they call this the triangle rust area because a lot of water, debris, leaves and whatnot can be trapped inside the fender and the rust will slowly manifest out uh, into the wheel wells and whatnot. But with this car, you don't see any visible rust. Um, and one cute part that you can see if there's rust manifesting from the inside of the fender would be actually from the glove box inside. If you open the glove box and look at the part inside it, you can, if there's rust surface already, 
then it's highly likely that there will be rust from inside the vendor that's coming out. Now, personally, I think the CSI doesn't get the attention it deserves. A lot of people who are not as familiar with classic BMWs are more focused on the CSL. But the fact of the matter is, as mentioned, the CSI is actually very similar to the CSL as the CSL was based on the CSI. So I think this car truly deserves more uh, credit and attention than it does. And I personally really enjoy my drive today. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed the car. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe. Please also click the bell button next to the subscribe button and we'll have more classic car videos coming along soon. Thank you.